Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest CTSS lecture. And this is a brand new lecture. This is going to be on endometriosis. Endometriosis is a common benign GYN disorder defined by endometrial glands and stroma outside of the endometrial cavity. Endometriosis has many different presentations from infertility or pain symptoms uh, to dysuria, the, the correlation between lesions and pain symptoms or infertility and endometriosis is poorly understood. There's a wide spectrum of disease severity and a wide range of CT findings as well as laparoscopic findings, which don't truly correlate well with severity of disease. One of the things that's very important in radiology is to be able to recognize or at least think of the possibility of endometriosis when you're looking at younger patients, surely females, with a range of symptoms, including a range of CT appearances. It's a common cause of pelvic pain. 30% of women with endometriosis demonstrate tubal involvement at laparoscopy. There are a number of pitfalls, ruptured deep pelvic endometriomas, release blood products, they can mimic PID, can mimic complex pelvic masses, thinking of malignancy. Can th You could think about tumors of the colon as you have implants on the colon that simulate primary malignancies. You can have obstruction of the ureter by implants from endometriomas, which can simulate uh, tumors of the ureter. So there are many challenges with endometriosis. Imaging has, in general, had a limited a utility, but it can be very valuable. People have used ultrasound, people have used CT, people have used MR. But CT is very good, and what's important is we do so many patients with pelvic pain or back pain that you need to be thinking about endometriosis in the right patient population. Although you're not gonna say a CT scan is ordered to rule out endometriosis in most cases, it is a distinct possibility and so it's very important for you to think about that role and what you might be seeing. If you looked at it pathologically, endometriomas contain a dense brown chocolate-like fluid and are pseudocysts formed by the invagination of endometriosis with the ovarian cortex. You often get adhesions. You can have deep infiltrating endometriosis, which can present as tumor infiltration, can infiltrate around the ligaments, can cause all sorts of problems and all sorts of misdiagnosis. Again, the symptoms are variable. Patients present with pelvic pain or back pain. So it's really uh, many things that you can go into the differential diagnosis. So again, as radiologists, it's important for us to think about that possibility. Now, it's interesting, endometrial implants are more common on the left side than the right. No really quite cause. And I'll show you that there's a range of appearances from very small lesions to larger lesions, from solid lesions to cystic lesions, from single lesions to multiple lesions. So you get my point, there's a lot of variability. The CT appearance of endometriomas can be nonspecific, although the presence of multiple complex lesions, high attenuation components within the mass, and amatosalpinx help to narrow differential diagnosis. Solid invasive endometriosis, which is commonly found in the recto-uterine pouch or posterior cul-de-sac, often extends to or invades the posterior myometrium and can mimic an adhesion from PID, but also, as I'll show you, it can mimic malignancy. Again, it's not an uncommon finding. Most of the time on CT, you're not gonna see a lot or even ultrasound or MR, particularly when there's small endometriomas. But again, there are a number of different possibilities and a number of unusual presentations. So here's a nice example. You can see in this image, there's a mass on the patient's rectum. This was an endometrioma. Now you could say, could this be a rectal cancer? Yes, could be a, this be a drop metastasis? Yes. But as a younger female, you see a soft tissue mass there. You have to think about endometriosis and endometrioma. Here it is again. Now they'll do laparoscopic surgery or ultrasound with biopsy and you can make the diagnosis. Again, I know you'd be thinking of malignancy or some other process, but you gotta at least bring up the thought of endometriosis. Another patient, mild bilateral hydronephrosis and hydrouretor, 
We're tracking down to the pelvis, and now we see complex cystic lesions in the region of the ovaries bilaterally. Now, surely a patient with pain, the right age group, and fever, you're going to worry about tubal ovarian abscesses because they kind of are cystic. They appear to involve the region of the adnexa. Here it is nicely on the coronal view. They're bilateral. Important to realize there's overlap between endometriomas and hydrosalpinx, uh, overlap between PID and endometriosis. So this was a case of endometriosis, complex cystic lesions, multiple, bilateral, a beautiful example of endometriosis. Now, I mentioned before about GI involvement, and I showed you a case a moment ago of rectal involvement. You can get thickening of the intestinal wall, most commonly up to rectum, as part of preoperative assessment. It's important to establish an accurate mapping of the intestinal lesions. You want to be careful because you can imagine the surgeon could perforate the colon if you're not careful. Again, frequency, rectum, sigmoid colon are all going to be common areas. Here's another example. Here's a patient with a mass by the cervix, left side solid mass. Here it is again, solid and cystic. There it is again. That was an endometrioma. Again, very nicely shown here. Very nicely shown here. And again, you can go through a differential diagnosis of implants, over complex ovarian cysts perhaps based on location, but endometrioma has to be in your differential diagnosis. Um, this idea about differentiating uh, endometriosis from other masses on CT, I think, again, it's a challenge. Um, I showed you some examples of cystic masses, showed you some examples of solid masses. Cystic and solid are also other possibilities. So there's a lot of overlap, which makes it a challenge for you to reach the right diagnosis. Now, endometriosis also is one of the things that gives you abdominal wall masses. Typically, uh, they occur in the region of scars, particularly related to C-section, but you can see them, uh, and they can very much simulate things like desmoid tumors. You can even think about sarcomas because the masses are often enhancing. Um, when you think about a mass in the rectus muscle or subcutaneous tissues near the rectus muscle, uh, female, you got to think about the possibility of endometriosis with an endometrial implant. I've been able to make that diagnosis a number of times, and no one typically thinks about it. It's interesting in terms of symptoms. Patients will present with cyclic pain, possibly a tender mass, and typically it doesn't occur to someone's had surgery and C-section is a very common surgery. So look at this really nice example. There's a complex solid mass that's enhancing in the left rectus muscle, as well as in the subcutaneous tissues, with some of the mass extending toward the antrum of the stomach. And then there's a large mass in the left, or rather the right lower quadrant, which appears to involve and arise from the region of the right rectus muscle. So again, masses involving both rectus muscle, this one deep in the muscle, the other one more exophytic. Here's some coronal views showing you that. Good example showing you that endometriomas are often fairly vascular. Not always the case. Most of the cases I showed you earlier was solid, but not vascular. I also showed you cystic examples, but vascular is another possibility, very nicely shown in this case. And again, you'd be thinking here about some sort of sarcoma, you're thinking about desmoid tumors. There are many things you could be thinking about, but the right thing to think about is endometriosis. And here's just one more set of images. Now, here's another case. One of the things we mentioned about endometriosis and some of the cases I've showed you have made this point, that it can simulate other processes, including malignancy. This patient had severe pelvic pain now, the patient had a history of endometriosis, so when you have that history, you always got to think about that possibility, but you see a large mass, periodic, displacing the duodenum. It's solid. You could think about lymphoma. You could think about carcinoma, which was what was considered. This patient was biopsied and ended up being endometriosis, and here's just same example, more images. Beautiful periodic mass. Up high here, I'm thinking about lymphoma. In a male, you'll be thinking about a germ cell tumor. 
over five centimeters in size, solid with a little bit of cystic component, intimately related to the patient's aorta and mesenteric vessels, again, nicely shown on this image, as well as on the axial and coronal plane here, as well as nicely shown on the sagittal plane. So you could see the important point that endometriosis can easily be confused with malignancy. Another example, patient with repeated episodes of bowel obstruction, abdominal pain, look how thick the small bowel loops are. You can think about Crohn's disease, you can think about ischemic colitis. Those are all good possibilities in the right history, graft versus host disease. A range of patients with prominent mucosal enhancement, bowel wall thickening, and edema. The patient also has some implants adjacent to the bowel, but you'd be thinking of something along the lines of inflammatory bowel disease or ischemia or radiation with the right history, lots of possibilities. But this was a patient who had implants from endometriosis involving the small bowel. A very unusual appearance. Look at the vasa recta here, how prominent the vasa recta is, pushing me more toward inflammatory bowel disease or some process like that. The vessels are patent, but engorgement of the vessels are seen. And this was a patient with spread of endometriosis, thickening with implants on the bowel, diffusely infiltrating. In this case, honestly, I would have gone with inflammatory bowel disease. I would have thought about ischemia, that the vessels look good, and the patient did not have a lactic acid elevation. But again, endometriosis, an unusual, unusual appearance. And here are some more nice images really giving a feel of what's going on. This patient had bowel obstruction, and if you look, it looks like a mass by the terminal ileum. I would have said lymphoma, maybe carcinoma. You even might think about a cecal cancer growing into the terminal ileum. You could see it very nicely here. This was an example of implants on the terminal ileum by endometriosis, causing what looked to all the world like a tumor. Yes, it was causing bowel obstruction, but this was endometriosis. Another example, this patient has, when you look at the axial images, diffuse thickening on this virtual colonoscopy of the sigmoid colon and descending colon. And there's a few small nodes here, but with this thickening, you would say, aha, I'm dealing with malignancy. And some of the images, there is this mass effect within the sigmoid colon. So you're thinking about a mass, and then you look again at the coronal views. Here's normal wall thickness. You don't see the wall. Here you can see the thickening infiltration. So we're thinking about multiple sites of disease here in the sigmoid, here in the descending colon. This patient must have malignancy. Perhaps this patient could have colitis. I guess you can think of that with skip areas. Here it is very nicely shown on the virtual colonoscopy. You can see the infiltration kind of like tumor implants on the surface, nicely shown here with the uh, implant. So carcinoid would be a good thought. Metastatic disease would be a good thought. A lot of possibilities. Um, narrowing of a segment of the patient's bowel due to implants. Well, at the end of the day, this was not a primary colon cancer. It's a good thought. This was not metastatic. This was not carcinoid. This was endometriosis with endometrial implants on the patient's colon. Now, I mentioned this whole idea about implants obstructing the colon, simulating tumors, causing bowel obstruction. Here's another example with small bowel endometriosis with multiple implants on the patient's distal small bowel. There's ascites, there's proximal bowel present. At surgery, in this case, there was endometriosis on the serosal surface of the terminal ileum and appendix. Endometriosis involves the GI tract in between 5 and 37% of cases, with the most common location rectosigmoid, like the last case, followed by cecum and terminal ileum. So again, it could really simulate processes in the right lower quadrant, which include lymphoma, which include Crohn's disease. Now, one of the other ways of thinking about endometriosis is complex cystic pelvic masses. Here's a complex cystic mass, multiple septations. In the right age group, you could think about ovarian cancer. Younger patients, tubal ovarian abscesses would be thought about. This was endometriosis. Another example, complex cystic lesion, thick septations, prominent wall. Again, ovarian processes, tubal ovarian abscess you'd consider, 
but a very good appearance for endometriosis. So endometriosis, one can consider that a great mimicker of other GYN pathology. So you may be able to suggest the diagnosis on CT in your differential diagnosis, but in a case like this, you know something's going on and you should put that endometriosis so someone thinks about it. It could be a malignant process, could be benign. But whatever it is, is going to need further investigation. And just a beautiful example of about a six centimeter to seven centimeter complex cystic lesion with multiple septations. Another example, in this case, pelvic mass patient was 40-ish. You would have thought of ovarian cancer. The concern here was primary ovarian carcinoma, complex cystic mass. I guess you could have thought about something inflammatory, big ovarian mass, cystic. Well, the good news was in this patient, this ended up being endometriosis. Now, that's not really great news. It's better than carcinomatosis, but it does make the point that endometriosis can be very aggressive looking. Cystic and solid masses can look like metastatic disease. And another example, left at nexal zone, complex cystic lesion with septations uh, involving the uterus directly. You can think about ovarian uh, mass. You could think about PID. Those are all possibilities. I guess you could consider complications um, from a prior procedure, like a laparoscopic procedure if the patient had one, but this was endometriosis. So again, showing you from solid masses to cystic masses and everything in between, that's the story of endometriosis. And here you can see it involves the ureter on the left, but no obstruction. And just to mention that uh, endometriosis, I mentioned, can be on bowel, causing bowel obstruction, stimulating tumor. It can also, as in this case, be on the distal ureter, where here it is on the right side, causing obstruction. You can see the hydro on the right with marked thinning of the cortex. Again, you might think of a long-standing stone. You might think of a bladder cancer. You might think of some pathology for the right kidney. But endometriosis was indeed the possibility and the right answer. And finally, this case, large complex cystic lesion in the pelvis. I'm thinking ovarian. I'm thinking the lesion bled into itself. Maybe it's ovarian cancer which bled into itself. Uh, that's a good thought. Whatever it is, it's ovary. There are some of the septations, serous cystadenoma, cystadenocarcinoma are all possibilities. Another thing to mention is sometimes endometriosis presents with an acute abdomen. It could do that because of obstruction of the ureter, obstruction of the bowel, uh, but also it can do this because we mentioned endometriomas are fluid filled. They can rupture. If they rupture, they can bleed and cause acute symptoms, very much like in this case, simulating appendicitis or tubal ovarian abscess. So again, endometriosis is described as a great mimicker and you can see by some of the examples I showed you, it does mimic a lot of things. So I started with this slide mentioning the importance of endometriosis, commonly seen on laparoscopy, not as commonly seen on imaging studies. I think we need to pay attention to it more. We need to consider impossibilities with younger women with persistent pelvic pain. We need to be very careful in looking at the rectum and sigmoid colon as well as small bowel. And if you look very carefully, I think you're gonna be much more accurate. And there's a lot of work that's going on trying to improve this accuracy, perhaps with AI. But with that, I'll see you next time. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.